So I know in the past I've given Lost Vape a hard time about how they used to create really, really cool mods and then recently they kind of focused more on like mod pods and pod systems and AIOs, but today is not really gonna be that much different. All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. Like I said, I got an AIO. It's a mod pod from Lost Vape called the Gemini Hybrid. The 0.2 mesh coil head in this has honestly been vaping really well. It's very sub tank like. But what I'm gonna do is put some timestamps down in the description as well as chapters on this video. We're gonna go up close. I'm gonna switch it over to the mouth to lung coil head. Then we'll come back up here for some pros and cons and some final thoughts. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw. Here we go, Lost Vape Gemini Hybrid. They only sent me one, and this is the one I've been using. You might notice this one looks a little bit different than a lot of other ones you've seen out there on YouTube and the internet. That's because this is from the Dynamite series. And as far as I can tell, the only thing different about the Dynamite series is the graphic on the doors. The logo here is different, and the logo here is different. All other things are the same as every Gemini Hybrid. Starting off on the screen shows you everything you need to know. There's your battery level indicator, your resistance, your wattage. You got a puff counter and a puff timer as well as colors along the bottom. Clicky up down buttons adjust in 0.5 watt increments all the way up to 80 watts and then you keep going and round robins back down to 5 watts. To reset that puff counter you hold the down button and the power button at the same time. It resets it. Now if you want to change your colors you do the same thing but with the up button and the power button you can cycle through all of the colors. Green. Grim green. It's just straight wattage mode. There's no custom TCRs or temperature control or any Anything like that. Little tab on the bottom is going to pop your door off. There's a ribbon. It runs on a single 18650. A little bit of a struggle to get that battery out every single time. Pretty standard issue 510 drip tip. And then you have your tank and your coil head with your adjustable airflow. The tank is sitting on top of a very spring loaded little pedestal. Give you this little ledge here to push down and kind of pull this out. Yeah. It does take some effort to get this out because this is a very long travel and it is very stiffly stiffly spring-loaded. Pretty standard issue rectangular tank. It's got this little tab right here that you can pull off, fill up your liquid. This is obviously so you can fill it up while it's in the tank. There's no need to pop your tank out every time you want to refill it. Been using this for a few weeks now and it stays very, very clean. You have adjustable airflow on the bottom. Additionally, inside the box, you're going to get warranty information and literature. You're going to get a baggie with some spare O-rings and another drip tip. This is the mouth to lung drip tip. As well, well as these plugs that are supposed to go in these holes on the door, it's mostly useless, but we'll talk about that in a second. There's your micro USB for charging. And then you get this little doodad, which basically creates a 510 connection. Boop, 510 connection, attach any tank you want. This is that Pioneer mouth to lung, you can see. Ah, no, not, I mean, there'll maybe a little bit of overhang, but just because of the bevel. Otherwise, it works, and honestly, looks pretty cool on there. I like single 18650 bangers, so this is a huge bonus for me. The Gemini Hybrid uses the UB coils, which I believe are compatible with most every other Lost Vape product. These are what the Q Ultra use, as well as their Ultra Boost X sub-ohm tank. MTO round wire and then the mesh. The mesh is already in there right now, but I want to use the MTL coil. This just pulls right out. It's about two weeks of water Malone in there. This unscrews from that AFC. We'll screw that MTL coil into the AFC. You know the routine. We're going to prime up this coil head a little bit and then that just presses into the tank. You can pop it back in. Bottom first. Boosh, open the fill port and just fill it up. Pop on that drip tip. My battery ribbon is excessively long and if I don't tuck it down in here, I get door wobbles. Now you can also take those silicone little plugs to plug up these airflow holes if you want a slightly, slightly, slightly tighter draw. You're still drawing a ton of air from this window right here, so this whole system seems superfluous to me. And I legitimately don't know if they're supposed to go on the back or the front. The front looks looks worse, but makes more sense to me. See that? See that door wobble? I can press up here. Door wobble. Door wobble. Well, we got it in mouth to lung mode. Yeah. So let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape the damn thing. Let's do some pros and cons and final thoughts. Normal view. Normal view. 
So pros and cons. Let's do some pros first. Both the 0.2 ohm mesh UB coil head and the round wire 1 ohm UB coil head vape really well. They are both quite, quite flavorful, with the round wire mouth to lung coil head almost being a little bit more flavorful in my opinion. It is also pretty slick. It's real well put together. I like the feel of it in my hand. I like the button placement right here because I'm gonna hit it with my finger guy, so this is just real conducive to hitting it with my finger. All of the buttons are nice and clicky and there's no play or rattle in any of the buttons at all. I love that it adjusts in 0.5 watt increments. Yes, that's my favorite, give it to me. I also really like that it's just real simple. It's just wattage. There's no temperature control. There's no custom TCRs. There's no nickel, titanium, you know, wire settings for this. It's just straight wattage. Keep it simple. I also like that they give you a few little color options for the screen. None of them look, you know, amazing, but it's nice to be able to change that. I love that it comes included with a 510 adapter. Like I said, I appreciate a nice little single 18650 banger for like mouth to lung tanks. And this one not only works great, but it feels very secure in there. Another pro for me is I really like how quick and responsive the button is. You press it, you get crackle, you get fire right away. In fact, it's so responsive that when you go to lock it and unlock it, do the five clicks, one, two, three, four, five. The last few are all gonna sizzle your coil just a little bit. It's not gonna ruin anything, but you can hear it firing. Now, if we're gonna get into some cons about this, they only sent me one to review, and I can only review what's in front of me, but mine has a wobble on the door that will just not go away. I thought I could fix it by tucking in that ribbon, but I can't seem to tuck that ribbon in enough to get rid of this wobble. And I know, yeah, I could probably cut this ribbon, right? But in my experience, when you cut battery ribbons like this, it ends up getting all frayed, and then ends up becoming useless and you need this battery ribbon because another kind of con of this is the battery is really secure in there and this tank is really secure in there. You, you gotta earn it to get them in and out. It's not much, but man, it's noticeable enough. Uh, another con for me is gonna be the mouth to lung airflow. I can't find a setting that I like. If you leave your airflow full open and you just use the small holes on the coil head, it's just real, real airy. Too airy even for me, and I like an airy mouth to lung sometimes. Alternatively, you can take your AFC and adjust it down so that the small hole on the AFC lines up with the small hole on your coil head, and that will give you a really, really tight mouth to lung. Really very tight. Another con is these dorky little silicone uh, airflow covers. They just look dorky and I feel like they're real easy to lose. They don't sit in there super secure and the difference that they make to your airflow is really negligible. Another con for me is the drip tips. The mouth to lung drip tip is a little bit more secure, but this standard 510 drip tip that you would use with like the mesh coil head is just the loosest, most folly out thing all the time. And it gets worse and worse when you get some like liquid residue condensation sort of built up in there. It just falls out constantly. Literally just takes no effort to go in and out. Ha, no effort to go in and out. Okay, so final thoughts. I've legitimately enjoyed using this. The mouth to lung on it, Nice and flavorful, if not a little bit weird with the airflow, but nice and flavorful still. The mesh coil heads, vape great. It's borderline like a sub ohm tank. And other than that door wobble, it does feel pretty slick, pretty techy. And the addition of that 510 adapter, I think that's just great. Makes this a little bit more versatile than your average little AIO. Now, if I were to bring back the banana sticker rating system, which I am, if one is the worst and five is the best, this is a very average sort of Three. It's not hugely imaginative or hugely innovative, but from my experience, it's been a real nice, reliable little single 18650 AIO. Now, are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you wanna check out the Lost Vape Gemini Hybrid? Eh, not really. Clicking around the internet, you can find it usually from about 45 to $50, $50 being like the highest I've ever seen it. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have, I got nothing left to vape, is the Lost Vape Quest. Gemini Hybrid, something I'm gonna seek out and buy like right away. Here's the thing, 
Probably not. That doesn't mean that it's bad or that it's not gonna vape great for you because it will. For me personally, it's not super high on my list of AIOs I would want. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. That's enough rambling. Links are not allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use that Google Foo. But remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is at least 95% less harmful for you than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, you guys, no matter what's in your hand, let's keep on vaping.